you put these photographs anywhere on the internet? I put my photographs on iNaturalist. Yeah. I'm Laura Gaudette, and I use iNaturalist with my Gaudette Laura, last name, first name. And I'm originally from upstate New York. I grew up in uh, the Saratoga Springs area of New York State. Um, my dad was a forest ranger, and we spent a lot of time outside. And um, so most of my childhood was in upstate New York, and then I moved to Vermont for most of my adult life. Well, I've always been curious about the outdoors doors and the creatures there and the plants and just being outside feels very peaceful to me. You know, there's a lot of field guides available now, but yeah. going back 30 years, there were a few, right, yeah. birds. And so I did a lot of birding because that's what was available to identify and wildflowers. Um, but then I sort of got interested in dragonflies and there wasn't so much other than the technical manuals for identifying dragonflies. So um, after birding one day, I had my camera and for taking pictures of birds and, you know, it was May or something and the birds quieted down and I saw this dragonfly that was amazing. And so I started shooting the dragonflies and trying to identify them, which there were some basic guides, but not much that was really available. So I said, oh, here's this Vermont Atlas of Life thing. Let me put it on there. And yeah, so I figured it out and immediately I got a message from somebody. The person said, we know they've been observed in Vermont, but you know, we don't, we didn't know that they bred in Vermont. We thought it was maybe accidental or something. So okay. that got me hooked. Like, okay, there's something here where I can learn and contribute. And um, so that's how I got started with iNaturalist. And then it was, it was my, my gateway my gateway into iNaturalist. Th that person who contacted me through iNaturalist is now one of my best friends. So he, he does nature writing. So he'll come to a, for a retreat at my place and then we, you know, we'll, we'll do some iNatting and probably have a 20,000 photo backlog. Sure. <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting, I'm more comfortable now just posting something. Like at first I wanted to have everything identified. Yeah, I wanted to put it on correctly identified. Yeah. Um, but now I'm evolving into just saying, okay, I know this is in the geometrid family, so let me just put it on. This is a geo, you know, this is an arctid, and just putting it on there and letting other people who want to or who know the species better to put an identification on it. So yeah. um, <clears throat> I've gotten better at just putting it on, throwing it out into the world, and it's amazing, yeah. right? It's amazing how 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 it's evolved. I find the AI piece is huge for doing the moth work. Um, and if I <clears throat> want to get it more specific, I can then go to other resources like Moth Photographers Group and, and try to sort it out from there. But more and more and more with iNaturalist, I'm finding even just to do a search of, let's say I was working on geos, do a search for geos and then restrict the area maybe to county and then just pull up you know all the species that had been seen in that area and almost use that as my field guide right and yeah. so before I go to a place I might do that and look through and see oh I want to see that one and I want to see that one and then I can go to other sources um, to find out maybe what host plants are to help me plan my trip to decide where where I want to set up a sheet or where I want to collect. I went to um, Panama probably 10 years ago and I was just starting moth work and I didn't know what anything was <clears throat> and I just put them all on as Lepidoptera and almost all of them now are at least to family but a lot of them have been identified from people all over the world you know people in Italy or you know who work on a particular group of moths and they just know what they are so, yeah, that's been really great. And even now, they, one will pop up, you know, tomorrow if somebody's identified it from 10 years ago. Mothing is, is really amazing because they're just so 
many moths and right butterflies are beautiful and a lot of people know a lot about butterflies but then there's this whole world that's sort of unknown to most people to get started with mothing i suggest you know unless you live smack dab in the middle of the city just putting a, a light on the porch just the porch light i when i started i used compact fluorescent light it worked just fine um, I got lots of moths. I lived in good habitat. Yeah. Um, so I would start with that. And I just started with my my phone camera. Um, and, you, you know, one thing leads to another. And now I've got all kinds of camera equipment. What we're working on right now is trying to work out life histories of species that aren't known. I started out only photographing, but now I'm involved with Dave Wagner mm -hmm. and doing caterpillar rearing and working out life history. So, you know, I assist with that a little bit, um, you know, because it's a big job to get a caterpillar and, and rear it all the way through, making sure you have all the host plant and, you know, keeping them clean so they can uh, mature and uh, pupate and then they close and, um, so I help with all of that process, and we call it mucking the stalls. Generally, when you're looking for something that um, isn't just crawling across you know, your driveway, uh, you use uh, what's called the beading sheet, which is just a big uh, white piece of fabric with some crossbars in between, and then you have a stick, and you slip that sheet under a plant, a tree, a shrub, even a little tiny plant, and then you just you know, gently or moderately whack the, whack the bush or the plant and then just look through what fell out and see if you have caterpillars. And at that point, if you have something, it's important to um, collect the host plant. Mm -hmm. And then often I'll photograph the host plant and put it on iNaturalist, regardless of whether I know what it is or not. And if I know what it is, great. And if not, I put it on and somebody will identify the host plant for me. I have my truck and it's packed with my tent on top and I'll be traveling around mostly the southwest. I might make it up to maybe as far north as Idaho in the next month. I basically have the next six months mapped out, not mapped out, but reserved for traveling. Maybe a little quick pop back to Florida to take care of things at home. I love, I love iNaturalist and you know, I'm retired now and um, it's a great, like, focal point, really, in planning, and a lot of my um, time and effort is spent around what I want to do, what do I, what do I want to achieve this summer, do I, you know, which species do I want to get, and so, yeah, it's, it's a big focal point for me now that I'm retired. And even before I retired, yeah. it was. I'm just like, I can't wait to retire so I can be a full-time eye natter. <laughs>